Alright, hey guys. I see this is my name. Okay, is here. Hello to you too. Doing my typical checks, making sure everything sounds good, looks good, and then we'll get rolling. I'll tell you guys what I'm making today. Something a little different than my usual. hear the music, I can hear myself, and let's roll. Let me get my music going. Great. All right, so today I'm going to be making mimics. Um, I have a mimic door, a mimic well, and outhouse that I'll be making. I'm not sure if I'm gonna make all of them in this live stream. We'll just see how far I get after an hour. Uh, but yeah, this will be fun because you guys will see me sculpt things that should be modeled. <laughs> If you don't know the difference, uh, modeling is a little bit more technical, um, like moving specific like vertexes and stuff, and sculpting is more like what, what you would with clay. I do it more like that. <laughs> All right, so the first thing I'm gonna make is a door. So let's get going. I haven't made anything, um, I don't know how to put this, like scenery-wise in a while, so this will be fun. Grab a mat cap that I like. And let's get a cube instead of a sphere. So the first thing I do is create like the building blocks of the door. So just a bunch of panels. Hey, Zax is here. Hello. Let's get a color on this that I like. A little more red. I've always liked those like more red toned woods. There we go. Also, make sure it's brightened up for you guys a bit. All right, and that's pretty much how we're gonna do this. This is piece one. Um, I'm gonna be making these mimics with a normal and a not normal version. I always think it's weird when people make a mimic and they like just make the mimic, but I'm like, then they know it's dangerous. <laughs> Your players wanna see like the normal version too. Granted, if my DM ever went through the effort of printing a normal door, like I'd probably figure something was gonna happen, but yeah. All right, so I'm gonna make sure that I have symmetry on both sides. So not like that. There we go, but like this. Uh, I'm gonna dynamesh it so it has a lot more polys for me to work with. And yeah, I'll probably just go through here and roughen up the edges just a little bit. I don't want it to be perfect. But I also don't want the door to look like completely dilapidated. That's a fun word. Dilapidated. Um, I like damn standard and this alpha. I use it constantly for wood. So right now I'm just trying to find it in between as far as um, texture but not being too much. I'm also going to turn off symmetry for this because I don't want it to be perfectly symmetrical. It looks weird I think. I'm actually going to turn on Lazy Mouse too because if I move a little bit slower, I can have a little bit more control. Make it look a little nicer. I'm going to do all sides just in case I end up going to use these other sides later on. Going to do the top and bottom as well. And there we go. We now have a wood plank. And this is great because I can stretch this, I can make it wider, and those textures will still look nice. Um, to add a little bit more to it, I haven't done this technique in a while. Essentially all you do is you just take your damn standard brush and you like carve little notches into the wood. And I've done it before with like great success, but it has been a while since I've done wood. Let me turn off Lazy Mouse for this. Oops, no RGB. Yeah, I hope you guys have been good. I have another sculpting week coming up if you guys didn't see the post. So I'll be sculpting for the next five days, kind of, because I'm not going to be doing Saturday or Sunday. But I might amend that because I wasn't going to do Saturday because I had D&D, &D, but we might be pushing that back. So if we push that back, I'll just live stream all five days. But don't count on it. I'll let you guys know the day, the live stream before. Like for instance, today is Thursday, right? So I'll definitely be live streaming tomorrow. Great. 
I've really been enjoying live streaming more. After I took such a long break, I started to miss it, which worked for the better, I think. So right now I'm just making some of these textures deeper, not going too far. Uh, I might throw some poly paint on here because the more effort I put into making this one piece look good, the better it's going to make the rest of it look. Yeah, I want this whole thing to be a brighter color. It's just a bit too dark right now. I can go over it afterwards and darken it up. There we go. That's a better, brighter color palette. It was just gray before. Okay. Okay, I like that. I'm gonna delete lower subdivision levels. Stretch it out a little bit. I'm gonna dynamesh it to see if I can like reduce the poly count like really quick and dirty. So this is before, this is after. Looks pretty much the same, but it's half the poly count. It's not like a technique I recommend doing, but it does work. <laughs> right. So I have a bunch of doors next to me as a reference. So I'll start constructing the door frame shape first probably and then put the wood planks inside of it. That would probably make the most sense. So I'll name this plank. And I'll pin a new piece. It's a dark color. This would be that uh, metal trim on the outside. And I'll probably have this studded as well. I want it to be a little bit thicker than the wood. Also gonna have front and back symmetry on this. All right, looks good to me. I'm thinking just how I'm going to construct this. So now I'm going to want a piece over here, like how wide do I want my door to be, all that kind of stuff. I think that trim is a little too thick, so I don't want it to be thicker than any wood that I have. So I'll make this a thinner trim. That looks better. I'll probably give it like a doormat or something, just so it's not um, so like hard to balance being printed out. Otherwise, it's just going to fall over. For this piece, I'll just put a curve modifier on it to get a nice bend for the top. That looks nice. A little too long though, so let's do that one more time. I guess I'll have to trim it regardless, which is fine. So a lot of these pieces I'm going to have to unify, I think, to get my symmetry right. So let me just do that now before I forget. There we go. So 
So I'm going to go with my trim rectangle brush and just clip those ends really, really easily. Oh, I think Ricky's vacuuming out there. Putty's walking around the room looking all nervous. What's wrong? What are you looking at? You're gonna make me think there's a ghost or something. Stop making- you're freaking me out. Alright, so as of right now, the planks of wood are very flush with each other, and that doesn't look super good to me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to expand some of them and shrink the other ones. So I'll go into auto groups or poly groups, and then now I can go in here and grab specific planks of wood and make them larger and smaller. small difference but once they're all like that it's gonna look really good. I'm just gonna go ahead and delete this one. No sense doing the same thing twice. Duplicate this and mirror. So the middle is like weirdly symmetrical but let's see if I can just flip it. There we go. I might also paint the inside to give it some better shadow. This will also happen in the render, but sometimes it needs a little bit of help. I don't want it to look too murky though. So I'll just do like this one path, and then if I like it, I'll duplicate it. It's been so long that I've done like I guess not that long. I've done the costume stand. Something else. A worn tent, I think it was recently. So just doing small improvements. Just keep working through it. Always being careful to have symmetry on the X and Z axis, otherwise it won't be affecting the other side. Looking somewhat door-like, not super door-like. Dave said, is this a magic door? It will be, kind of. It's going to be a mimic, as of right now. Just the door. <laughs> and I'll have rocks all the way around it, too. Alright. Let's get this a more pale color so it's easier for me to see. So I want to add some studs to this. I might texture it a bit first so it's a little more rough looking. Not sure which one of these I would like for that though. 
Probably this one. It's a really small detail, so I won't spend too much time on it if I don't like it. Because I had back face mask on, it's acting kind of weird. So let's try it without it. But being careful, it doesn't tear up the other side, which it wants to. <laughs> Don't be a pain. So I'm just doing the same thing, but with alt this time to prevent it from caving in. I kind of like how it looks on the edges, so I'll do that there. Really small detail, I'm just gonna cover with rocks anyway, so. We'll move on. All right, and some sort of studs. I have little parts right here that would probably work great. Um, let's see, which one do I want to use? I like these ones a lot too. These are set in far enough. So a doorknob with jaws, I expect, <laughs> pretty much. When I'm doing work like this, I always want to make sure perspective is turned off. It just makes it a little easier to see. All right, this is not symmetrical. Why are you not symmetrical? I did mirror and weld, so if it wasn't, now it should be. I'm gonna split mask points because I wanna make sure that these little knobs are separate. I don't know why it's not symmetrical. I will probably have an aha moment and figure this out later, but for now, for now this will have to do. Though it is bothering me. Why are you being like this? It's always something new, right? <laughs> Whatever, I'll put it back where it was that we don't have to readjust the panels and let's get this rolling. I'll just make sure that one side looks good and I'll deal with the other side being super crooked. So you can see what's wrong with it. I don't know why mirror and weld isn't fixing it. the wrong axes? Yes, that was the issue. Gotcha. Now we're fixed. Cool. That was going to drive me nuts. <laughs> Make these a bit smaller because there's going to be a bunch of them. Also use array mesh for this. That's really simple, so I'll just do it by hand. It would be perfectly spaced if I did it by array mesh, though.
This one right here got a little bit clipped, so I'll just go ahead and delete hidden. Door is looking a little fancier. I probably end up getting like a weird half jewel in the center here. That's fine. It's a double jewel in the center there. No biggie. I think that was kind of cool. So, I set another one on top. Just to make it look intentional. Kind of gives it a neat focal point too. It's a little bit of poly paint. I think I want the probably just do them the exact same color. I don't want to draw too much attention to it. All right, a few more things I want to do. Oh, I haven't been looking at the chat either. <laughs> just a moment, guys. I've been very focused. See Dave just chatting along. So now I'm going to make a door handle, doorknob. I like it's just like a classic, like medieval knocker. Since the wood is uneven though, it's a little challenging. So I'm gonna do. Go. So even though it's a little uneven because of the wood panels, I don't have to worry about it. I see this is my name. Okay, got a roll, so let's do that really quick. Bam. Let's see what you get. I'm sizing my dice so it's not like the entire screen. <laughs> Alright, here we go. And roll. Three. So I get to pick my headphone color, which something tells me you're going to pick yellow, but <laughs> thank you for the donation, by the way. Really appreciate it. All right. While I wait for you to tell me what color you'd like my headphones to be, I'm going to keep on working. <laughs> yellow it is. It should have changed. Might be a little hard to tell just because it's so bright in here. <laughs> All 
All right, you know, I have a really cool brush with a bunch of decorations, ornaments. Maybe one of these will work well for like a, a knocker. These might be a little too decorative. I don't want it to be too flashy. This is supposed to be a very unassuming, normal looking door. Yeah, let's not do any of those. It'd make it look fancier and a prettier door, but again, <laughs> maybe a little too obvious that it's suspicious. Looking a bit more door-like. I go back through later and make that a bit more decorative, but that's it now. Yep, looks like a doorknob. <laughs> All right, and then I wanted to get like those crossbars on it as well. Actually, I'll make sure I unify this because I don't want this to be out of symmetry. Sure, turn on symmetry on X and Z. There we go. Maybe not on the X, actually. Just on Z. Oh, that's right. I haven't flipped right now. There we go. There we go. That a little bit higher. about the shape I want. I kind of like these, that more studded look. The round's nice too. Not sure what I'm going to want to do with that. Probably that, just dynamesh, like an in-between looks nice. All right, I found that under clothing, I believe. I sure did. All right, I don't want it in symmetry, I forgot about that. I can deal with that in a second. Okay, go ahead and split mask points. I can turn off symmetry, mask this, polygroup it, select it, and delete hidden. Okay. It's a little crooked. <laughs> it's pointing down ever so slightly, but I can fix that. back here and bring it up to fix that it is ever so slightly crooked. There we go. There we go, I think the layered look makes it look a little nicer.
just making all of this darker. I think it looks better. There we go. Let's go ahead and duplicate this, but lower. It's a very cartoony looking door. I do like it. And we want to mirror and weld this because it's not quite what it's supposed to be. There we go. Alright. I think it needs like a little bar right here to show where it attaches. Scooch these over just a bit. Yeah. All right, looking like a door. <laughs> Just needs the rocks around the edge of it. Which just might end up being a little harder than I expect it to be. We will see. Go ahead and append a cube. Change the color of this. I've noticed the blue tones work best. Dynamesh it so I have more polygons to work with. Now I'll just go in with Tram Dynamic and kind of wrap up the shape. The trick here is just do a lot more tapping, not so much like scribbling, but like just tap. Go. I do want it fairly block like. You know, I do have some rock alphas I really like. I'm trying to think of where I have them. Are they brushes? I thought they're alphas. They might be a pair of brushes, actually. It's been a hot minute since I used them. have one that somewhere in here that shows what they all look like but I don't want to take the time to pull that preview up here let's just add some cracks to it overall Maybe not. Okay. I do want the right texture on this. I know I have them. I just don't know where the reference is. That's one huge pet peeve I have about if I ever buy brushes. They never come with like, this brush looks like this. I just have to like memorize it. So I create my own references. Um, it takes a bit, but it's, it's worth it. All right, here we go. Here are my references. What would work best for this? It's 
it's like 10. There we go. I also need the sh shape of this to be a little bit more interesting. like a rock. It's a little too bumpy, I think. So let's do it again, but with a lower intensity. So I just want the texture there. I don't want it to change the shape of it too much. There we go. Wider. Okay. Let's start stacking these. First, let me decimate this. Much better. I don't need to have a bunch of points for these. I'm trying to figure out like how clean I want this to be done. I'm thinking I'm gonna have it all scooch in like that, and then at the end, I'm thinking I can go in and trim it. That will look nice. I think that'll work. So keep building this up. So yeah, it wasn't building this up on the side that I was worried about. It's the top. I'm not totally sure how I'm going to do. I guess it's not going to be that bad.
So right now I'm just playing with like how different do I want them to look? Because I think the symmetry is fine, but I think it'd look even better if they weren't perfectly symmetrical. The only issue with that is that I kind of screwed up with the texture on the back of this. So I'd probably need to dye and mesh these and decimate them again, which is fine. There we go. this a bit. Side of this rock too, and then trim bottom. And I'll go through here trim dynamic. So that way these edges aren't so weirdly flat. I'm looking forward to making the mouth and the teeth. That's gonna be a lot of fun. Top is coming out. Yeah, I can just duplicate that onto this side and then I'll figure out what I want to do with the center rocks. Just twisting it ever so slightly so it's not perfectly symmetrical, it goes a long way. door is looking really nice. <laughs> A lot more detail than I anticipated making it, but I can't help myself. It's going to need some sort of, again, like carpet in front of it or rug because just trying to put this down printed, I feel like it's going to fall over. So I will append, let's go with this cylinder. I'll just keep it the way it is actually. And from here, I can split this in half, shrink this up. small that way it has a bit more balance you know I'm doing two just because layers always make things look better definitely too far forward looks weird. I don't know when I did that. There we go. I meant for it to be a little more half circle. That's better. Give him that same rock texture too. I think that looks nice. Looks like it doesn't want to do that for the edges. Just have to do it more carefully. There we go. I'm 
Now I'll make the rocks a little bit longer to match. I really like this door. <laughs> it's simple. It's literally just a door. Or is it? I haven't saved once yet. I'm feeling brave. Yeah, I guess I'd be it for the door. I think it's the door is finished, and then now just trying to make this look finicky. All right, I'm gonna go grab a snack, and I will be right back. Something I usually pause. I can't remember what it is. I think we're good. All right, I'll be back in like five minutes. I'm back. I also put my drink in like a little thermos because it was melting way too fast. And I have some Cheez-Its. So my mic muted because I don't want you guys to hear are we eating. So I'll be quiet for a bit.
If Ace says, I love your comment. That's hilarious. He'd probably sit here too. He's a very good boy. He's just kind of blind, so I'm worried he'd fall out of the chair. <laughs> All right, so right now I'm working with how the mouth is gonna work. It's obviously causing issues. So what I did was, is I duplicated the um, the mesh. So the one with the mouth is on, I can just take my trim rectangle and boop, just trim the back of that. Mouth is completely open, that's fine, because I have this duplicated. So the back still looks normal. So now I have control over how I want to Carve this out. I kind of like the idea of it biting on that lower piece. I have never used this mouth brush, it was just part of the pack, but oh my goodness, now that I have it, I am so grateful I do. This is gonna, this is really helpful. I can really like experiment with how I wanna do these shapes without losing a lot of time. I feel like the mouth has to be centered more than anything, but I don't wanna. I mean, I think it'd be kind of interesting if these metal bars were like, also distorted. Yeah, yeah. There we go. The whole thing should be really distorted. Yeah, the, the bottom lip of this is my favorite part. Can I have that smeared to the side? I like the idea of even like the rocks and everything just being stretched like this way, just a little bit. And I'll go with damn standard and this textured kind of that tearing stretching. not quite doing what I want it to, so I'll do it without the alpha and just do it by hand. When everyone wanted a mimic door, I think this was the most popular one. I was like, okay, cool guys, whatever. But now that I'm working on it, this is really fun. <laughs> that happens a lot, actually. Like the um, elementals I did in February, I did not want to do those. Uh, steampunk this month. Was not excited about steampunk this month, guys. Really did not want to. I put it up there because I, I knew it'd be a good challenge for me and stuff. I do like steampunk. I just... I'm not confident with like the skill set that I have versus like what steampunk needs to look like. But now that it won and so I'm like, okay, put my best effort forth. I'm super excited about it because I found some really cool concept art. Part of me likes how ridiculously distorted this, the back is. <laughs> not gonna keep that obviously because <laughs> would make no sense. There we go.
don't mind if this is all bow in the back though. I think that's actually gonna look really cool. This is looking so freaking cool. Very happy with this already. Just wait till I have to start doing teeth. Teeth are always fun, like the first 10 teeth. And then after that, you're like, oh, I'm still doing teeth. I'm sick of this. At least that's how I am. It's the same way doing like scales and stuff. I'm like, oh boy, scales, dragons, how fun. And then I do it a bunch and I'm like, wow, I'm really sick of this. All right, I'm gonna merge together the frame and start getting this like a uh, stretching, tearing looking motion. Yeah, I think I like the side to side stretch the most. I still want to keep it mostly contained in the metal frame though. There we go. I don't know if it matters, but this hasn't been changed at all, so let's there we go. Now everything has been affected. This looks so cool. All right. It's time for teeth. Which normally I would sculpt by hand, like do one and then place it, but since it's all monstery, it doesn't really matter if they look chaotic. So I might just scribble them in instead. All right. I will need to dynamesh this because this is definitely really stretched right now. Here we go. So yeah, this is the current, this is the before, so you can see all the stretching right here. When I try and add a polygon or deform it, it does a bad job, but if I dynamesh it first, come on, here we go. Now it's going to do a much, much better job. All right, what kind of teeth? Do I want my mimic to have? These are supposed to be horns, but I think this might. Nah, that looks weird. I definitely need to give it a tongue too. I wonder if these are curved enough for my liking. Speaking of, does this have teeth in it? Of course it does. might be a little too sharp. I do like that though. Because whatever I make, I have to then, you know, support and actually print. So I don't want to get too crazy with the teeth. I mean, the bottom teeth, I can do whatever I want, but the top ones, especially, I want to be more careful. The mesh is so weird, so like the teeth brush is reacting really weird. I think this is the brush I like the most. What's interesting is I have that wood texture on there, right? So what's happening is when I use this, um, what are these called? BDM brushes. It's stretching that with it, but it's like automatically detailing the teeth for me, essentially. It's, it's nice.
My goodness, whoever opens this door is not living, that's for sure. I was gonna have to use more different kinds of teeth, but this brush is really doing a good job. All right, let's see how it does for the top. I'm gonna be careful not to make the top teeth too clean looking. So to prevent that, I'm gonna try to do this a little like faster, <laughs> a little easier handed. So right now I'm being really careful where I'm placing all of them. I think it's making them look a little too like calculated. So let me just throw some teeth in here and then let's see how it turns out. I'm surprised it's looking this good even before adding like the gums and stuff. Here we go. Yeah, for the tongue, I'm thinking I'm gonna have to place it, which is fine. That would probably be perfect. Where is it? This one looks really chaotic. I like that. Man, this monster brush saved me a ton of time. Highly, highly recommend. Right now I'm just adjusting it around the teeth, making sure it's not being stabbed by its own teeth. Now, as far as how I want to texture this, I'm not really sure. I think adding some little bumps on it would be pretty gross. So let's go ahead and do that.
like I want it to glow green or something. I'm probably going to scrap this idea, but we'll see. I can't help myself. At the very least, like, tint the teeth or something. I just want to draw more attention to the teeth, so let me get a lighter color on them. Why does this look so good? Why am I so proud of this? Man, I'm so happy with this. I think because I had no expectations going into it, probably, but like... God, I love this. Basis says, kit bashing pieces together like this is the best part of sculpting, in my opinion. I completely agree. Because it's not about... I don't know. Like, each line and being so, like, thoughtful and careful. You know what I mean? It's like... Bam, I can make something. You know what I mean? It's about getting to know your tools and letting your tools work for you, you know? So I love digital sculpting so much. I have so much respect for traditional sculptors, but like, I made this in like an hour. You know what I mean? If I did this by hand, I'd, it'd be days. <laughs> I'd be so slow, you know? Even if I got better at it, I mean, you're, just, you're limited, you know? It's amazing. Oh my god, I'm gonna have to call Ricky in here and be like, give me compliments because I love this thing. <laughs> That's one thing I can't, I encourage my students all the time. Like, be proud of your work. Like, if he says, I like that, I know that you, you're proud of your work, you enjoy your work, and you should. You've come a long way really fast. <laughs> I love all of my students, but there's always a few that I'm just like, how are you picking this up so quickly? Because it's a whole different way of thinking, you know? I have some students that took a month just in the navigation assignment alone, and I don't fault them for that at all, because, like, it's, if you didn't at least grow up playing video games even or something, like, it's totally alien, you know? God, my Kickstarter supporters are going to lose their mind over this. I already know. Sick. Getting a fun render goes a long way. <laughs> Oof, that's so cool. It's just too dark. Can I lighten this up? looks pretty cool. I'm trying to get it so it's easiest to see. Still think it's a bit dark. That's better. Where am I? Seabrush part three. I need to release this set soon because it's getting just a lot. Build. Cool, freaking cool. Nice. All right, how long have I been live streaming? It's probably been over an hour. Just about an hour. Very nice.
just taking a moment to enjoy it. I'm just very happy with this. Making something like this, even like a month ago, would have taken a lot longer than an hour. I've gotten better with not like doubting what I'm doing and just just moving ahead. There was a couple points during this I was not excited about where it was going. <laughs> I thought the door looked really boring. Which I mean, it's just a door, so. Not sure how much I was expecting it to wow me, but it did not wow me. <laughs> Well, I think I might end it here because this took an hour. I don't want to live stream for another hour or twice this because that just sounds exhausting. Um, so yeah, I think I'm going to leave it here because that was really nice, like start to finish, you know? Hefesa says, I'm a furniture maker by day and so I'm pretty used to SketchUp, which is modeling and architecture and stuff. ZBrush is just more organic. That's a really good combo of skills to have. It's pretty sweet. That also explains why you picked it up like immediately <laughs> all right i'm gonna call this a wrap uh i'm gonna live stream again tomorrow thank you guys for hanging out this is just a really nice mellow time for me i really enjoy it live streaming used to be like i don't know not stressful but like very energy intensive it's like one of my favorite things i do now uh but yeah i'll see you guys tomorrow at five i hope you have a lovely rest of your evening bye